Hey, you went flying, bitch, and spur. Hey, you went driving around the world. Hey, you went brown like a squirrel. Hey, you went shitting nail pearls. Hey, you went Rolls Royce car. Hey, you went Rolls Royce truck. Oh, you want to wall it all my holes. Oh, you want to line it all up. Yes, sir. Hey, in I'm the field, on the pill. Black yeah. print, J5, Josh P's in the building. You here? Yes, sir. Back again. Back again. MC in the building. What's up, MC? What's going on, pals? It's a nice little Sunday. Setting into July 4th weekend. I'm pretty excited. Summer is technically officially here now. So shout out to everybody enjoying the summer. It's not technically. It's officially here. It's not. There we go. <laughs> on the, as of the 21st. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. I w- I'm not even going to just, you know, have us do any type of banter without, the, without letting, you know what I'm saying, a, a good friend of the pod come through and talk his shit real quick. You've heard him on our Amp Radio show on Black Print Radio. He's been on there twice. One of the few guests that have been on there... <laughs> On there twice, yep. uh, you know, uh, just just a all around great dude, and I'm glad he could he could join us today for the show. Trevon Edwards, Trey, what's going on, bro? Hey, shit, man, I'm so happy to be here, man. Couldn't make it to Paris Fashion Week, so I'm eating a baguette yeah. just for the boys. <laughs> you feel me? Hey, and that's so funny because on last week's episode of Amp, we tried to call everybody in the fucking world, and everybody was in Paris. <laughs> the whole area, the whole c- culture was in Paris. Niggas is literally in Paris. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I saw. Uh, it's funny. I just saw he Huey was out there. Yeah, he was at the Lowriders at the Apple oh, Tower. Listen, he going crazy. If y'all listening right now, go follow at Huey Briss. This nigga got the Lowriders in front of the motherfucking Eiffel Tower. He spotted Sade today. That's probably like the rarest Pokemon you possibly can fucking find <laughs> outside of Andre and his motherfucking new gadget he got. <laughs> bro, Huey is my. My muse for 2024, bro. Traveling, bros. Love it. Like, bro, really got it locked in. You know what I'm saying? He having wine that he can't pronounce. Nigga <laughs> FaceTime me asking what type of wine to pair with his fucking state. You know what I'm saying? It was just beautiful. It was a beautiful time, man. Black man out there uh, thriving. Absolutely. I, everybody got the invite but us. That's the, that shit's crazy. <laughs> everybody got I mean, y'all can, y'all can come out here. It's New York tomorrow, uh, next week. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It is. It is. Might have to pull up. The weather's looking nice. I'm hearing it's good out there. Mm-hmm. What, what what shows are you trying to pull up to, Trey? I mean, at this point, wherever I'm invited, I normally get the emails, but I, I can't make them all, bro. That shit ain't realistic. <laughs> yeah. And I ain't thirsty like that. I ain't trying to party. <laughs> I ain't trying to do that. I just be trying to see my friends. I feel and that. And support. Yeah, yeah. That's all. The Fashion Week thing is funny to me because it's like, I, I don't work in fashion per se, so it's like not a real reason for me to be there besides just being there it's a lot of niggas that don't work in fashion that's out there though yeah no and that, that's that's they thing yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of motion it's a lot of motion out there though yeah no absolutely i'll be just trying to find real reasons to be there like if i'm a if i'm a walk or i'm a be you know if i like i, I was talking to anwar about it and it's like okay like maybe i do a pop-up or something like yeah. that but if there's no real money or real motion it ain't really for me yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so because we didn't have anybody on AMP and everybody was like, hey, bro, I'm in Paris, we did a whole Double XL freshman themed episode last week. So, you can check that out, of course, uh, on our channel as well. Uh, Trevon, did you see the Double XL freshman? How many, did, how, out, of, out of all of them, what's the percentage of people you knew on that list? <laughs> if you've seen it. All right. Let me, I, I see, I glanced, but like, I didn't even really, I know most of them rappers, though, because I'd be trying to be tapped in and shit, but <laughs> I'm pulling it up right now on my phone. Have y'all thought of your fashion fit if you ever were invited to Paris? Let's say you got invited to Paris last week. What's your fashion fit? I fashion fit. My, every day is my fashion yeah, fit. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say I ain't gonna switch it up too much, bro. Yeah. Like honestly, I might disappoint a lot of niggas because I might be in them Uggs, um, the motherfucking um, Tasman joint. Yeah, like, them uh, shits is number one in the nation for me, bro. Yeah, I, I don't know. I get dressed every day. I would get anxiety <laughs> fucking trying to do that shit. I'm just probably be regular. All right, I found I found a list by the way too. Yeah, pull it up. Who 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 you who didn't you know? Who didn't you know? <laughs> His face. I, so only person I ain't know on this shit was um, DC to Don See? and Sleazy Everybody, World Go. I think it's a hundred percent for DC to Don. Nobody knew who the fuck. And he Sleazy was. World Go, you might have heard his song before. I probably heard some shit, but like I'm I'm kind of tapped in though. Like Tia Tia Corinne, Too Rare out in Philly. Shouts to Philly. Finesse two times, which I don't think he should have been on there because. He's been a Merrill Minute. Yeah. Rob 49, Love Tyler, obviously Friday, Love Rilla. Mm-hmm. I don't know why she on there either. Lola Brooks, <laughs> she'll run from around the way. 
Um, Real Boss and Richie, eh, I ain't really listening to music no more. Um, <laughs> See? Central I'm telling C, you. Nah, nah y'all you. know why. What you mean, C? I know, I know. <laughs> I'm still listening, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to ignore I'm, I'm it. Not a, I'm, I'm not a civilian, man. I can't play by civilian rules. <laughs> man, Central C, I love to hear it. And then, you know, so these are different things. I still ain't heard that other man album, too, out in Atlanta. See? So Damn, he's an other, other man. man. Uh, wow. I I ain't even listen to that album. I heard it just to tap fantasy. He talking about. I heard the. Nah, I ain't even I'm do. Like, I ain't do none of that. Shouts that. Look, I see. I see the numbers. I only only album I stream was slimes. Uh huh. Yeah. Let's go. I'm I'm on both sides. Hey. <laughs> but I'm. I tell you one. I tell you one thing. I have no. Listen. listen to I've listened it. to the. Listen th- to I've it listened, all. I've been yeah. listening to the thug. I'm just saying, my family won't let me listen to this and, <laughs> and, and, and partake. I ha- I will say I have been listening to the Thug a lot more than the Gunna. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's not because I'm switched. You know what I'm saying? It's because it's just the beats are just way better. <laughs> oh, my heart just I was like I can't even hear feature like Gunna featured on tracks anymore. Like I wow. hear old songs, and I'm just like I gotta skip this. Like th- it's like that. It's it hurts to listen to. Like I just like it's it's painful. I think it I think it hurts. Well, that's the same thing with Richie though. Like. Like, he, Richie, shit. He, like, he got a lot of good excuses for his it, reason. He got a lot of good, he got a lot of good excuses. And Josh's and, and Josh turn, he's got a lot of good excuses, but also like he's so young, bro. Like he's got a long way to go. It's not like he was on top of the charts and then you know what but I'm saying. It, like he just started. But I, I, to keep it real, I have a lot of friends and family who feel exactly the same way Trayvon feels. Okay. They just won't even tap back in, won't even tap in initially, just because they're like, nah, I can't fuck with that. We'll see where he goes with yeah, that. Yeah, I, I just, I just don't condone. I just don't condone people that just get to like you can't go one foot in, one foot out. Especially like you know my, I mean, is Richie one foot out? You know, my my parents, my parents are gang members, bro. My grandma's a gang member, bro. Like I was once a gang member, bro. So like it's just different. Obviously, I'm a civilian now. I've graduated to. I don't even think I can graduate because like if I just walked and a nigga gave me a handshake, you gonna know. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just I can't condone that. Even though if he felt he was tricked or whatever you want to call it, but the internet, I just think the internet is just making a lot of shit weird. I Gunna said he was tricked. Gunna said he was tricked. People that actually were in the streets did not take pictures, and now everybody's photogenic and doing podcasts and and yeah. very tell ish. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a very self inflicting era right now, and I'm not with that. And now we got you know it's BET weekend. That's just tonight. Yeah. Fact. Mm-hmm. And you see Who people knows? talking about, hey, don't don't check you. I saw the brick baby shit. He's like, don't 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 call me. Hey man, it's so funny. <laughs> I, I love shitty. That's one of my guys. He said, um, don't call me. It's he's our an weekend. idiot though. He's just so, <laughs> he's such an idiot. <laughs> he posted that, then got arrested like the next hour later. No way. He's out now. He bailed out instantly. Um, but niggas is crazy, man. Yeah. I, I think to Trayvon's point, it's too many gangsters on the internet talking and just being mm-hmm. uh, front facing. Yeah, and that's going to be the downfall of that culture, mm-hmm. which might not be a bad thing. I don't know. Maybe that culture needs to die in some some aspects. So. Right. That shit, that shit going to look like the meme where cars are flying and shit <laughs> when niggas just self-wipe themselves out. Like, it's going to be look crazy, dog. I remember 99, what, like, like 98, 99, 2000, but gangbanging had like kind of got corny a little bit mm-hmm. and then i think niggas was trying to find their way to be honest and honestly i think it hit like 2005 the jerk era kind of killed the gangbanging shit off a little bit too because yeah. niggas want you can't you can't carry you can't tote the shit with the skinny jeans you feel yeah, me but 2005 so, is it's a good point because 2005 was a point where it was like cameron and the dips was out and they was making it cool mm-hmm. then the game made being the blood cool mm-hmm. and and then yep. and then jeezy was out well, and it was a crib he kicked, he kicked he kicked it right back out yeah that's what i want to say yeah that's when it started popping back up yeah. again and it's funny like yeah. the gang culture in la was always around but to your point i think people are just trying to find other outlets like mm-hmm. you gotta remember mm-hmm. i mean at least being in la you had clown dancing mm-hmm. and like all that shit going on and like that was the the gang outlet for a lot of people and even those had yeah. semblance of a gang. You had your little cliques and shit, and y'all right. meet up at the mall and fight or whatever. But, um, yeah, I don't know. That that didn't last that long. And once that started to phase out, yeah, you know, gangster rap pop- popping back up. And now you got Raz B saying he's a crip. He's a 6 crip. So, I mean, where? I watched his apology. Yeah, I watched his apology video. What did I, he, I didn't watch it. I, I, I still I want, I want to keep tonight's episode of uh, Bad Boys Texas clear in my mind. But what did he say? 
Oh well, I see. I don't watch the show, so I okay. saw the apology first. Oh, yeah, 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 and then I went back and watched the clip of him on his show. He has like a mental, like legitimately. I don't know if it's induced by something, but he was having like a mental well, breakdown. On the all show. of them have mental breakdowns. <laughs> like Orlando, like that's why I was like, damn. Like I saw the clip and I saw people talking about the commentary around the clip. And I'm like, damn. People are saying Orlando yeah. Brown is the sane one in this, yeah, yes. in this thing. Yes. It's, just, it's just crazy to me. But yeah, Orlando Brown said <laughs> something like blood, which was kind of like, what? You're blood? He's, he's, I've seen him claim he, it before. But he, yeah. but, he said blood and cuz at the same time. Yeah. See, I, I'm, that's confusing. <laughs> then he said on Pyru, right? Then he was wearing a, but, but it was weird because Raz B was saying cuz and saying he was a, he was a crip wearing a CK, uh, a Calvin Klein shirt on his back. That's, I'm just that's like, crazy. I was like, that doesn't sound, that doesn't look right. Look, it's all it, it's all troll culture at the end of the day. I'm glad somebody made the call and made him issue that joint because again, <laughs> it is no joke. People are really losing their lives over this color yeah. in these streets and these these you know these 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 libraries of of things that mean so much to us, even if it's bad. Yeah. Um, and you just can't play with that because that's when outsiders think that they can come to the city and just do some stuff. And it's not even on some check in shit. It's just. You know, you wouldn't allow us to go anywhere else and disrespect y'all shit. So, exactly. you know, it's a code. Right. It right. is what it is. But also, you can live your life like a civilian and ain't nobody going to touch you. Same mm-hmm. as here. So it just depends what you're looking for. Because, um, shit, I crump dance and all that. So everybody, not every person that you know that did something corny. Yeah. yeah. Everybody. Everybody got one corny shit. I remember I was, I was looking at it. It was a Mohawk post. Oh, and man. Oh, wow. it was talking. Oh, it was, it was young LA, right? I just saw that. And I start, and I start thinking back, and I said, "Damn, I remember the Diddy voter die shit. I remember mm-hmm. Rodman '94 with the Spurs, mm-hmm. the blonde shit, Demolition Man, James Harden, Mohawk, Mr. T. Like, who had the best or who had the most influential? Obviously, Mr. T. But Mr. like, T. I be thinking about it. I got mine when Diddy did the voter die shit. I was bored, nigga. <laughs> I had a crate. That shit looked like. That shit look like a fucking bird's nest, nigga. Now I think about that shit. I'm glad nah. this during the this during the T male era. So like them them video them pictures are never resurfaced ever. Quality was bad. Like I just was trying some shit bored at school. And that's the thing. It's like a, it was a lot of niggas around that area era with the Mohawk. Like mm-hmm. I think it's funny. <laughs> you're right. Those pictures did die with T male because a lot of those photos don't resurface. Like I haven't seen them. But it's like, it's so many people in LA that had a mohawk at one point. Like, I remember um, my nigga T Rail, he had a mohawk at one point. Everybody and, did. And I just remember seeing him out and being like, damn, this, this is the nigga that be with Tiger with the mohawk. Because, like, like the, the, then the mohawk graduated to the box fade again. Because I, I know I know when that came back, I had the box. Yeah. I, I had the box. You mean like the. <laughs> the, the box, yeah. Oh, I yeah. I, I, I for yeah, sure I had the. I, I, I ain't never fuck top. with that. Yeah, I had to high top in like eleventh grade, damn near on some just. I'm on my my old eighty <laughs> shit. Like, shit was corny, corny as fuck. I I, I remember watching shots as like 2013 resurfacing on that joint, right? And I just got this weird obsession with Mad Max, bro. And I was like, yo, I'm gonna grow my shit out because I was in Portland and I didn't want to get no like I didn't trust no barber. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna grow my shit out, bro. Like, so I had to fro and shit. So, like, my shit kept growing and growing and growing. I had paid this girl and shit to like do my hair. She did the top, and I went to the, I went to the shop, nigga, and got the size faded. I finally let niggas do my shit. I'm like, yo, you can't line my shit up. But it's 2014, y'all. I come back. My grandma had died, so we was burying her. So I went out one night. We went to, uh, uh, what's the shit? Guys and guys and dogs. Yeah. And niggas was calling me, uh, uh, what's the nigga name from Living Single? Kyle oh, Barker. Kyle Barker. <laughs> no way. Niggas was, call- niggas was calling me Kyle Barker Buns from motherfucking Booty Call. Uh, booty Call. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I looked, and, I, and that shit kind of bullied me out my shit. Low key. Like, it bullied me out my shit only to see like niggas like Travis Scott. I gotta say, now it's the thing. Yeah. Other niggas do. But no, they had started doing it like a couple years later. But like I had picked the shit up from Mad Max, and that was like probably me and this nigga named J Five, Johnny Five, um, that used to hoop and shit. But yeah, like niggas really wasn't on that. Yeah. But I got bullied out my shit because I just thought it was. I'm like nigga, if I'm getting cooked like this, I know like this shit ain't rolling with the women. <laughs> you gotta be strong. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, though, that's the thing. You gotta be strong willed in situations like that because when niggas be shooting. 
Bitches low key be loving that shit. Yeah. They be like, oh, like that, like he different. Like I like that. Well, that was a, but that was a thing too. I was in my era where like it really wasn't no joints telling me nothing. Mm, like I feel that. That, that was some dark. That was that was some dark times. Nah, because you know what I mean. Like it was, it was, it was the other flavors on me at that I, time, yeah. and I was like, I, I can't take y'all cosign. Like, <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nigga have my shit with the Lego man. Uh, <laughs> The Lego man hairline, bro. Listen to them, bro. Nah. <laughs> bro, hold yeah, on. Yeah, so I- Hold on. We, we went off on a crazy tangent. We got we to gotta bring the shit back around. I got to congratulate this man, Josh Pease, for the Juneteenth uh, event that happened last week. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you and the team. That shit looked crazy. Shout out to Lamar Park, man. Yeah. Like, how, like, can you just give us a clue in and list how that came together? Because to me, that came together really fast. No, nah, I mean, it, it's funny. We, it's, this is our second year doing it. Um, you know, Lamar Park's been having that Juneteenth celebration. Yeah. I would at least say for like the last five years. Um, shout out to 6F, Mayor of Lamar. He kind of kicked it off and has been like a young, uh, voice and just person thriving in that, in that scene. Um, I think after, uh, you know, 2019 or 2020, I w- it was George Floyd 2020, right? 2020. I think after that, that was like the first Juneteenth where it was like a lot of people just back out there. Um, the following year, that was when we came in and we were involved or no, it might've been a year after that. But anyway, Amazon came in and was like, yo, this is something dope. We want to just support the culture, support the scene. Um, you know, we just was like, yo, like you guys are already doing your thing. Like, let us just own a stage. Right. We'll bring some talent out. Um, this year is just a bigger event. Um, we, crazy. We had a uh, we owned one of the stages. We brought out Amazon Access, which is like the team at Amazon that like lets people know about Lailway plans and EBT and just like they're like honestly, if people don't know about this, check out AmazonAccess dot com. They are the plug for uh, inner city families trying to just figure out little programs and things like that that's going on. Um, we brought them out though; they're a big part of it. This is also Hip Hop 50. So we had like a yeah. big Hip Hop 50 activation there. Um, right. We had like a lowrider out there and then like a bunch of classic West Coast photos from like um, that Mike Miller, uh, Danny, Top Shelf Company, Estevan Oreo. Yeah. Some classic photos too, like photos of fucking Dre when he had his hands tatted by a fucking Mr. Cartoon, <laughs> like just wild shit. Um, so yeah, that was like a piece of it. And then um, of course the stage, yeah. we had um, Jasmine Sullivan as our headliner. Um, we had Too Short, who was a part of our like hip hop fifty campaign, fifty and forever, at Wale, mm-hmm. uh, Alex Vaughn, and Kaylin Farrell. And shit was crazy, man. Like honestly, like leading up to it, I was like, yo, this is gonna be crazy. I, I w I'm not a big Jasmine Sullivan fan, right. but I saw how big of a fan people were when we like announced it. Yeah. And like it was like people hitting me up from all over. I'm like, I gotta like, get in. <laughs> yeah, and it's like yep. it's a free event. Like yeah. I was just like, man, just walk up, <laughs> it's the right part. But um, so, yeah, we've been planning this for, like, months, years even, because just even getting the contracting down with their team, that shit was just a lot to get through. But, um, but yeah, no, nah, that shit was, it was epic, man. Like, we had over 50,000 people out there. It's crazy. Um, and we kind of anticipated that. Like, we even had, like, screens in the back just so people in the back could see. Um, but, yeah, I didn't anticipate just, like, the um, the energy of Lamar Park that day when I got there was just a little bit different than it's ever been. I, I describe that um it's not even funny it's like it was just like a little more i don't know like it was just like an energy in the air like just electricity and it wasn't a bad or a good thing it was just like this electricity in the air and uh you know as we start to set up we're like okay like it's gonna be a good day right um everything was going good and then um and it wasn't even that anything went bad really like honestly there's a lot of overreaction i think people have seen the news reports and they've seen stampeding and possible gunshots and things like that Mm -hmm. i want to come here and say there was no gunshots at all (laughs) Um, you know, it's Lamar Park. It's it's the hood, the Fodies. They've been out there since fucking White Man Can't Jump film. They were actually in the film, so they just been hanging out out there. Right. So even before, like it, like the day, I kind of already knew what was going on. Talked to some people I know, and just like, yo, like hold it down. Like, yeah, we trying to do this for the community. It's gonna be old folks out there, kids. Right. Like, let's just hold it down. And um, the people I knew did the best they could, but it was a fight at one point. Um, and I literally saw the whole fight happen. It was a man and a woman. So oh, I can't wow. even say it was any gang violence. Right. It was a man and a woman fighting. Um, someone, uh, another guy jumped in, kind of knocked the guy out. That was the <laughs> fight. That ended. A bottle broke. And that's what kind of made people run. Okay. That was one thing. And then um, after that, it was actually um, a tent had fell. Wow. Because there was just so many people out there. Just people pushing against tents and things like that. And then when that tent fell, I think someone shouted gun or something like oh, that. And then man. people ran. And really, that was all it took. I mean, the, the city was trying to shut it down all day. 
Okay. Like the fire marshal was there and just like, yo, we just getting packed. Like we saw like we saw people on the roof during two shirts performance. The Pizza Hut roof was yeah. the biggest party of the of the day. <laughs> yeah, like shout out to Pizza Hut. Um I, we had saw people on the roof since two shirts performance and the city was like letting it ride. Yeah. But they were also like, This is kinda dangerous. Yeah. And then at one point that came up to us and it was like, yo, like, uh, the city councilwoman like wants to shut this down. And we're like, huh? Like she backstage with us. Like <laughs> we went and found her backstage. She's like, nah, I, I'm forgetting her name right now. She's like, nah, like this is for the community. Like we right. gonna keep it going. So like, I don't know who made that call to him to, and lied, but she was having a great time. Crazy. Mayor Karen Bass came out. She was having a great time. She came, shook hands, kissed babies, did all the good stuff. Have you found the girl that was dancing on the roof? Yeah, I did. I forgot. <laughs> I follow her on Instagram now. I forget her name. She's uh, she's a Delta. Okay. She's from LA. Um, she's actually a DJ too. We're gonna try to have her DJ next year. That's fire. Um, shout out to her. She was just having the time of her life. She was turned yeah. all the way up. I'm uh, trying to look for the other girl that was dancing on the roof <laughs> while they was performing. <laughs> oh, <her little> hands? <laughs> it was a girl shaking her ass up there. And I'm like, I'm trying to find you. <laughs> yeah, he he turned he he shut shit down. I, I, yeah. He he, he lo- it looked like everybody was was paying attention to that performance, and that was like the one. Like, if you didn't see any video from that, I knew that I saw multiple videos of what Wale did that day and. You know, it, it's it, it has to be vindication for for a lot of things for a lot of things that people say about him. And, I, and that's the thing. I hate that it even has to be vindication. It's like yeah. you're a part of black culture. You're one of those artists who you can go in any black community around the United States mm-hmm. and have a performance, and it's going to be turned. You have those hits. Like, and I hope that he realizes that. And I know I realize it. That's why I instantly when I thought about a performer, I was like, let's get Wale. Yeah. Like he has hits across generations and just across demographics and just across um age groups right it's like lotus flower bomb is some shit that my mom knows and then you got no hands is some shit that i'm gonna turn up to so like i saw that coming and um i was just you know i was just happy to see him up there having a good time like you know crowd singing along to every single song Um, it was dope so shout out to him um shout out to dj money he had alex vine on Mm -hmm. she was dope i was actually surprised by her performance i i'm a fan of her music but just to see the crowd that was out there for her yeah i was like okay like you really you got something yeah so um yeah man it was dope i mean sadly we didn't get jasmine on stage um after that tent fell they were just like yo you know this is just turning into like a, a, a hazard um so we had to shut it down early but you know shout out to everybody that's coming out Hopefully, you know, we'll have another performance with Jasmine really soon for the public. Um, maybe it'll just be for private, honestly. <laughs> but, <laughs> no. but yeah, we, we were definitely trying to figure out how we can kind of do it bigger and better and safer in Lamar Park. And, you know, shout out to the community. Like, that's a community I actually lived and grew up in. Right. Like, when I was in high school, I lived right off of King and Eighth. So um, just to see something like that, like, you know, I grew up going to the King parades and and to see that energy transmuted into uh, the Summer Park Juneteenth as an adult is just super dope. So it's crazy to just give back like that. Like that, that's just such a huge moment for not, for just you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, nah, be able nah. to get back to that that neighborhood. I mean, that's just my life goal. My work goal is always to kind of give back to the, the the community and culture that inspired me. Right. So that's something I'm always going to do. And um, you know, it just felt good. Um, I was uh, <laughs> I was joking with the homie. And I was like, yeah, I might have to do this shit in uh, Inglewood, Market Street. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's getting a little more gentrified, so it might be a little safer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll figure it out, man. I, I just, I, I'm glad that people were able to have a good time for the time that they did have. And, yeah. you know, see you guys next year. Hey, man, big BND for that, man. Shout out Josh Pease for that. Shout out Amazon. Legend. Uh, legend. Come on. Legend. Man. Come on. Trying to be. I would love to hear your guilty pleasure. Well, uh, my real answer is <laughs> <laughs> Christmas music, all the Christmas. Pat Harry's house on repeat. Sweet creature. Daydreaming. Harry Styles. Harry Styles. I listen to a lot of Rosalia. You can be sad, but being sad in Spanish is way worse. All Sade records. Sade, Sade, Sade. Shake it off, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Banger. Anything by YG gets my Friday night turned up. Is This Love by Survivor. Powerful 80s. Get in the car, that's the best song I'm talking right now. Last weekend, of course, June 13th weekend, another thing that popped off was my fucking joints and my knees, my elbows, my arms, because your boy started yoga last weekend, and mm. I'm hurting. I did it again uh, yesterday, actually. Oh, I, shit. I went to another class yesterday. I'm trying to like make this like a like a like a weekly thing. Like I, I'm I'm really interested in doing this. I didn't know that it was like so intense though. I didn't know that like when you got there, like they calm when you get in there. When you look around that bitch, these motherfuckers is on and all types of contortions and shit. I don't know any. I didn't know any of the names or any of the moves. Yeah, so I was just like looking. Yoga's tough. You was in there farting? No, absolutely not. I'm. 
I made sure not to. I mean, you, you you saying absolutely not, but that means you ain't calm, bro. What? <laughs> you eventually you're going to be in there. Nah, for real. Watch when you reach to that point. That motherfucker going to be in there smelling like a bag of chips, nigga, the bag of legs. <laughs> nah, I should, the right pose is to get that gas out of you. The right, sure. the right pose going to be in there. That nigga going to be mad. Like, ooh. And niggas going to laugh. At, niggas going to laugh, but they going to understand. Like, that shit be smelling crazy up in there. But it, if, real, it, feels, like, it feels dope because... Um, there's not a lot of like black men in there. So mm-hmm. like when I walked in there last weekend, it, it, it not a bad way. It was like attention was on me because it was like, people were just like, damn, is, is he really in here? Like doing this shit. <laughs> and like the teacher was extra like, yo, like you're doing a great job. Like she would like extra attention on me. What well, was it? Your first time? It's my first time. It's yeah. probably more of being your first time. One thing I'll say about yoga is that like, it's super inclusive. Yeah, it is. When I was, when I started doing, I did it like 2019 and I wish I would have kept it up, but I just honestly was just like, I don't know. I just got lazy with it. Yeah. But um, I remember my first class as being like feeling like all eyes are on me. Yeah. And then like after my like second, third class, I'm like, oh, these niggas is focused on their pose. They Absolutely. don't give a damn what I got going on. Like more than anything, it's like the teacher just being like, are you comfortable? Yeah. But once you kind of get into your flow, like they're just like, all right, like you're just another another yogi. <laughs> it was it was dope because it was like low impact. It was like it was what do they call it? Gentle yoga or whatever. Um, so it was mostly kind of learning the steps, learning what the downward dog is, learning what the cow, the resting child, or whatever the hell that shit's called. All of all of those, and I thought I was killing it, but I was I was I, I was really in there. I was with my wife. You know, my mm. wife is like she she's like uh, a converted yogi. Like she's been doing it for the past year or so because you know she she's she's an aloe or, or whatever. And I was really in there with her. I was like, I got to do better than her. I was <laughs> I was in a competition with her <laughs> See, really? on the first day. On the first day. I was like, no, nah, she can't. She can't outdo me in this shit. So I, I got competitive with it. I was doing all types of shit, all of this, all of that. Yeah, be because, careful, man. What? Why? why? <laughs> Cause, bro, you gonna pull some shit if your body not used to that. You gotta. That's why it take time, bro. Like ease into it. When I tore, when I tore my ACL, bro, back in college, that was the shit they preferred was like Pilates and yeah. yoga, right? Yeah. And it's more so building that muscle up, bro. Cause like. Most NBA players get broken down on in spin cycle and yoga because they're using parts that we don't normally use. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like think about as you get older, different parts of your body don't like just fuck up. Mm-hmm. You could be reaching in the cabinet for some peanut butter and they can be like, What? What happened? That, that's like, how it is right now with my right knee. Like my right knee yeah. has been like killing me. It feels like it gets inflamed. Right? Like but like so, I but it's like when I did yoga that first time, I was like, that pain went away for like four or five days. Like I can't like it's to a point now where I can't drive longer than like an hour, hour and a half because it'll it'll start like tingling. Oh shit! And it, it, I'm just like, bro, I'm really getting old. But like when I did yoga, it, it went away. Like all the lower back pain, the pain in my right knee, it, it was gone. And I was like, yo, this shit really actually works. Yeah, no, nah, yoga. I mean, it's just stretching your body. So it's like we don't stretch enough as adults. No. Period. Oh my god, yeah. that's me. <laughs> yeah. So that's just like it's just teaching you that and just being more intentional about it. Yeah. Um. I'm glad you brought Pilates because that's something I've been wanting to get into just like for this uh, the strength training. Now, what does Pilates focus on? Um, It's like core work. Okay. And it's like you, sometimes you're in a machine and like they have the little arm and leg bands. And- yeah. Bro, that shit is the truth, bro. Yeah. I seen a meme the other day talking about pay for your girls Pilates class this summer. <laughs> I mean, if I, if I if I if I had a little holly that I was tricking on like that, I definitely would be saying, you feel me? That shit is the truth. But like, the classes be mad early. Nigga. Them shits be like 7 6 a.m. Yeah. Like, I know a joint right now that teach one right in Soho. I could not make it to that shit. I, I ain't going to lie. Early. So, and it's just like, oh, the machine thing is a little intimidating to me. I'm like, I ain't trying to be I mean, look, apparatus. I done played myself so many times, bro. I done played myself so many times. Like, that's how I know for experience, Justin trying to beat his wife and shit and, and you know, and out posing her and shit. But here's My the dumb thing. ass went went to a fucking spin class <laughs> trying and I yeah. sat in the front with the with the chick that was an instructor. Now I <laughs> they invited me out the night before. We yeah. took shots and everything. Yeah. I got up for this early ass class, man. That shit broke me, bro. Like was I was up. trying to I was trying to be remember that episode of Martin where, where Gina finally took me to the gym and he ended up being an instructor and he was doing all the fucking moves. I was trying to walk in like that. And I tried to do it yesterday, and I was like, whoa, this wasn't gentle yoga that I took yesterday. This was like a basic-ass class, and it whooped the shit out of me. Like, I kept having to go back in. They, like, her her base pose was the downward dog. So, like, everything that you do, you work in your core out in that fucking, in that whole thing. I was, like, literally on my, I was, like, sitting down, like, no, nah, I can't do this shit, bro. 
I'm about to die. I'm literally about to die. Like I don't ever sweat. And my whole my, like the back, my back was sweating and shit. I was like, "Come on, man! Oh, this man. Is, if you don't sweat, you're not working out." It's too much, man. <laughs> it felt it felt good at the end. Like I'm sore as fuck today, yeah. but I felt like I I accomplished something. Like I I felt like I'm like challenging myself. And I think that's the one thing that I I when I when I left yesterday, I was like, that's the one thing I'm kind of missing in my life is like that physical challenge. Like mm-hmm. I challenge myself mentally, I challenge myself at work, I challenge myself, you know, with everything. But coming off of a, like a long ass week and doing yoga and and, and shit like that, it, it helps me reset. And and I think like that mindfulness is what I'm kind of learning. Like I used to look at yoga like this some cult shit. Like this ain't this ain't real. But like once <laughs> once you think of it like in your own terms, it don't really it's, it's not it's not really like that. And like I, I really enjoy my experience. I, I, I want to keep doing it. Yeah, I, I I would love for all of us to do yoga. To be honest with you, no, I mean I would, I'll take a class or two. I'm trying to get find a good Pilates class close to me. Um, that's not too early, honestly. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm down for it. Peace. I found one out here, bro. But it's cannabis. Okay. See, I'll start smoking. Wait, what they got <laughs> cannabis pumping through the, uh, the vents? Nah, you smoke and then y'all do the pose. Everybody smoke as a group at your mat. Mm. Then y'all start doing it. That's and, one they thing. Teach you breathe, and they teach you breathing exercises. When I did, when I was doing the yoga, I did smoke before. Yeah. And I felt like that was just like, it helped with the whole just getting into the Well, mind. you get out yeah. your head too, bro. Yeah, that's true. Because you, you be thinking too much like, am I doing it too? You know what I mean? Can I go further with this pose? How what hurts? What this? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you, you being this is the most vulnerable spot. Is somebody looking at me? How I look in these fucking tights? I don't know if you was aloe down. You feel oh, me? No, I want, I want aloe down. Here's the thing: I, I've never asked my wife for no aloe. So like, I, I came tripping? in, I came in like, uh, I got the mat because she got the mat, but I came in with like some like I, ha- I have some like Nike Tech running like uh, I had shorts and and those under under it but i can't look, wear those look. run those running pants niggas let her be fly bro hey nah, see, you gotta, wanna, you, i'm trying to come in there with the whole you I gotta fully now. convert man i went <laughs> and when i was doing the yoga shit i had the mat i had the tights <laughs> i was in there in tights like that's my my one thing though i will say is that like it didn't stop me from going but towards the end it was like some bad bitches in my class <laughs> and i was just like all right i'm going with my girl when i was going with my ex at the time I'm just like, yeah, it's some joints in it's here. Gonna I might be, have to, might have to start problem. coming three times a week. I'll be there one day the, without you. <laughs> I'll be in there with the old ladies, bro. And I, I'm like, I'm with, I'm here with y'all. They they more flexible than me. It's funny. I know a, a bad yoga teacher right now. Oh my god, I don't even want to give too much. They all sense. cold. I know she one right now. Got she, or, bad. she probably just got <laughs> armpit hair, bro. She used a motherfucking key lime for her deodorant. Nah, oh, she not. Uh, she 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 one of the ones. Craziest shit was like at the end. You know, in the end, you, you kind of like you you kind of decompress. She walked yeah. around with this essential oil. You know, I don't trust. Oh, I don't trust shit like that. Niggas putting shit in your hand. Like niggas was putting the essential oil in their hands and rubbing it and smelling it and shit like that. I was like, man, I wish I would have did that because it smelled kind of good. Like I could, I could smell it. Nah, bro. If you ever have a headache, rub your hands with some essential essential oil and put that shit up to your nose. That shit will cure a headache. I'd knock your ass out. Crazy. No, literally, I did that shit like a couple weeks ago. I had a crazy headache and just was like, oh, no headache. I wish I did. Like I, I think there's like one thing with me. It's just like I, I don't know if it's like with me or with like certain people. I just don't trust shit. Like, I, I just be like, I, I don't trust a lot of it. Like, even walking into yoga, I was just like, I don't know if I trust this shit. Like, get, putting yourself in, like, vulnerable positions and shit like that. Like, it not, not I don't know, like, like Paul shit, but it's just like, yo, like, I don't, like, is everybody doing this? Like, I was like, I was distrusting of it at first. Can't even look around, man. It's got to be in your zone. I'm going to look around because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So well, like, I look I, at the I, instructor <laughs> and I'll I be trying to, like, instructor, come over and one on one me. Like, yeah. Make sure I'm doing this shit right. Yeah. Touch me. Do all the shit. Like, I need to <laughs> move my back. They, yeah. be, they be lying sometimes because they just be trying to just give you that little encouragement. But, bro, you be, that's why you got to wear the, like, the, the fitted clothing because mm-hmm. your t shirt, like, a nigga be trying to wear a t shirt, nigga be doing this shit. Bro. <laughs> you be looking, you be looking bad shit crazy trying to have loose garments. You're not supposed to have loose garments. That's why. Nigga can't be like, no, I ain't gonna wear no tights, so or I ain't gonna wear this type of shirt. Everything gotta be I want like, it though. fitted. I want no, it. I'm I saying you get gotta be shit. fitted, bro, because if not, you're gonna the... be doing some shit and your motherfucker gonna be like, just like, I'm gonna have to oh, fit. I can't see. I'm gonna have to fit and I'm gonna take a picture of the of the of the, of the, of the, of the whole aloe down yoga fit. And I want I want the same fit, bro. I'm gonna feel me I'm a, I'm expensive. Say, did you did you get your shit? I did not. I'm a, she listens to the show, so like she's definitely gonna hear it again. So she, I'm gonna make sure you get your your stuff, your influencer pack, bro. Look, I'm not even adding pressure, bro. Like <laughs> I go to the doctor tomorrow so I can get cleared to golf. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, if, if we back out here, if we back out here in the yoga shit. 
If that's what we push it, let's do it. Push it. Pu- pushing the real P, pushing Pilates. Oh, right. Push it. Push it. Peter, more sweeter. Pushing yeah. Pilates is a good one. Pushing Pilates. That that hey, that's that's the episode name right there, man. There we go. Okay. But I, I want to get you guys' thoughts on something else that happened this week that I that like it was an incident that I I really was not paying attention to until it got to like like the most severe part of the whole thing, the submarine submersible shit. Oh yeah. I hate I to laugh. I literally just potted about that too. I hate to laugh. I hate to laugh. But like, even when I looked at that shit, there isn't something in your mind that says, and when you look and, and a nigga walks you over to something and looks like a fucking a pill, a beach pill, you open the fucking door and you can't even sit yeah. down. You don't got no seats. You got to sit cross leg. It got a PlayStation controller. <laughs> they went. Deep, they went deep down there in a fucking Arizona tea can, bro. Bro, I was like, I, what, I think. Listen, they, I think this is the thing. When we first heard about it, it was nigga what? When we found out like what was what they was in there shaped like, like how the chairs, and then we found out niggas was using a PlayStation controller. That's when jokes like you cannot stop yourself because they said they should have never gave us that info. They said like niggas probably would have been like more calm and like supportive. But once niggas said, yo, you pay 250 racks, bruh, to sit in a motherfucking beach pill slash Arizona tea can. And watch a nigga. First of all, they didn't even have submarine holes like how niggas drive. Oh, that was my thing. Like, no, not even like, like the, nigga, you know, the old cartoons where they bring the little telescope down, they bring it down from the ceiling <laughs> and they look through that shit. They didn't even have that shit in there. They ain't had none of that shit, bro. So the fact that niggas went out like that, bro, and I feel bad. Only person I really technically feel bad for is the 19-year-old because I'm, I know his he mom go. like... <laughs> Nah, that nigga guilt tripped that nigga on some Father's Day shit. Like, you never <laughs> spent time with me, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> did you like, know that? I know that nigga hit him with that. Did you know that in the in the actual submersible, the only window is in the bathroom? So in the, in this uh, bathroom, it's literally there like was a, a bathroom. Th- there's a. It's not it's even like a, a bathroom. Toilet, right? It was like a little the plastic bag, in a po- like a pot, bro. Yeah, it's like a plastic bag with a pot, and that's the only like you would take a shit or piss, and you'd have to look out of that window. That's the only window in there. How long did they anticipate to be down there? They had to be down there. It takes them about eight to ten hours, I think, to just get down there. And then you have another eight to ten to get back up. So, like, that's literally without eating, without none of that shit. You have to go down there. The whole day. The whole day. I'm so cool. Niggas niggas ain't had no no white cheddar goldfish in that motherfucker. (laughs) No... No fruit snacks. Like, it was not... crazy. Like, niggas didn't even even send me off nothing, bro. And the fact that... Like niggas sent us the message talking about, oh, they got they they got until Thursday at six a.m. until they run out of air. Nigga, that shit crushed like a fucking can. Well, that nigga. was my thing. Like when it I, combusted. No, it did. No, it that's did. when I started. When I heard about the like, they got hour this many hours yeah. to survive. I was like, they're dead already. Yeah, they're. they're like, dead. I kind of assume like when I first heard about the story, I'm like, they're dead. You're not finding them because I before the implosion shit came out. I was like, oh, if the power ran out, they just sunk to the bottom and they're at the bottom and they probably can't get them because they just sunk. And I think a lot of people thought that. Yeah. But then like when they found the debris, it was so funny that everybody was like, oh, it just imploded. I was like, that's what, <laughs> that's what y'all got from that. I just, I, I heard the story in steps. So when I, first I thought it was a submarine. So I'm like, oh, okay, if there's a submarine down there, like they probably, they, they probably got some hours. But then when I heard it was like a submersible, yeah. I'm like, that's not a submarine. And then I saw what it looked like. I'm like, oh, they're dead. And then a couple of days later, they came on, so they imploded. I'm like, okay, like that makes a ton of sense. Like, luckily they died a fast death rather than you know dying of air. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, that's just stupid, man. Honestly, like my all in all assessment of that is that like white people are just too adventurous. Like, <laughs> I ain't really trying to see nothing under the sea. Titanic, even... like, hey, what are you gonna see at this point? The Titanic is just sunk what hundreds of years ago. Yeah, and it's starting to fall apart. So like, but what are you gonna, gonna see? I was gonna say insult to injury, James Cameron, yeah, flexing how many times he done been down there, twenty six, and then motherfucking, and then motherfucking Netflix making the motherfucking streaming available on July first. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, it's just taking people taking advantage of the moment, which is great. That's what they should do. I mean, you know, people are really stupid. Like, yeah, I really. That's the what I just came down to. Like, it's two hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars to go down there and not see the Titanic. Cause you're not seeing it. Like, why can't they just send a camera down there? Well, what they would do, and I think the biggest fear was is that they would get down there and they would get stuck on something. That's like the most common thing when people do submersible stuff like that. Is that the Titanic has so many? It's breaking apart literally. So like, you could get caught on like the railing that was on the top of the ship that you saw in the movie. But it it was like you're you're gonna see it for maybe an hour, 
but what are you seeing? Like that shit, it's been sunk for so long. It's yeah. probably coral all around yeah. it. Like, what are you trying to see? Some things have preserved. Like, like I said, like they, they said that I think I saw a report that said that the Titanic, the ship itself, probably won't even be around in the next four to five years. It's gonna, it's breaking apart slowly, slowly because of bacteria under the water. Yeah. So like they're literally just looking at, oh, this is where the the movie took place at, and this is how they did it, and da da da. da. But it's like. That's not interesting to me, I, I think. Like, At all. I didn't know that there were so many people, like, besides James Cameron, that were so obsessed with this fucking ship. I just, I I, I don't get it. I'm still trying to figure it out. But honestly, I'm not, because I don't want to get that interested in it. So <laughs> where I'm trying to go down there and see some shit. But would you Would you ever? Fuck no. I was just going on YouTube, man. I ain't trying to go down there and see that shit. I don't even like, I don't like open water like that. Like, yeah. Hey man, stay y'all black asses out the water, bro. That's the hey. Nigga, I've seen a motherfucker on Twitter, bro. I was hoping it was AI. A motherfucking <laughs> shark, nigga, jumped up out the water oh, and landed on a nigga deck, bro, and yeah. start tripping, bro, like it was a wild <laughs> chainsaw. I ain't never seen no shit like that. I nigga, saw that. that showed me. Listen, I know they down there talking shit. They say, look, we don't fuck. We, we fuck with the seasoned brothers up there. We don't fuck with the unseasoned. Uh-uh. No, that's a real shit. You know what I'm saying? The fact that Free Willy and his homies out there flipping boats, nigga, I tell you enough. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. I, I said the, the orcs or the the or, uh, orcas. orcas and the fucking killer whales have been like communicating yeah. and they figured out how to they kill, like, the, kill us. Not even kill us, but they just know how to like stop a boat. Yeah. And now that's what I'm they've been doing. And, and like some scientists are saying they're playing, but no, they're just like, they know how to fuck some shit up now yeah. and they figured it out and they're telling everybody else. And now it's like, Stop fucking with nature is, yeah. is really like the outcome of this. Like, stop fucking with nature. We've been fucking with nature this whole time. You're killing shit off. Icebergs is melting. Nature is fucking mad. They pissed off. I'm telling you, when niggas controlling the weather now, we got government weather. Mm-hmm. It's out. They finally <laughs> confirm. You know what I'm saying? What? I've been don't knowing. Be surprised if, yeah, don't, yeah. don't be surprised, Josh, and you turn the corner, nigga, in South Central, and you see a street shark. <laughs> nigga just Bro. wearing straight pants, nigga, with, pant, with boots. I wouldn't be surprised at all, man. Aliens is here. I, it's so funny because the, the weather shit happened this week. That was like something that was confirmed. Like they said, they've been controlling the weather, and they have a weather machine. Where? where? NASA, someone said they confirmed. Well, I got to yeah. follow up. Well, NASA, well, NASA been making motherfucking uh, rain for a minute, but then China got the motherfucking... Um, the 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 the, the sun, mm. but the sun, the thing about the sun that they've been making that motherfucker getting too hot. So the shit, like you know how the movies where you like the villain got the motherfucking ray, yeah, yeah. the shit be like, and then it just combust or some shit. <laughs> well, nigga, that motherfucker that went too far off, nigga. So that motherfucker really cooking, bro. Here's my that thing. Gonna melt. That shit gonna melt like the Chappelle doo doo prop, Bruh. <laughs> My thing that's so crazy about all that shit too is that like so you had the alien landing, which they talked about. They the, what, what is the alien like? You said I mean, the, the government. Alien, like, the I government knew said no. It was <laughs> the shit happened in Vegas. God. It was like some aliens in the backyard, God. and then they went. How? How any time? Sorry to cut you off. How any time niggas do anything? Breathe. They pull out their phone and they record it. This one fucking time <laughs> when niggas in the backyard, they ain't got the phone. But but no, so because it wasn't niggas, myself, first of bro. all. It wasn't niggas. And they have some footage. And then Ooh. once the shit happened, it happened in Vegas. Okay. Shit landed. It was like they have some footage from like a ring cam or something like that. Mm-hmm. But after that happened, NASA was like, no, this is this is unconfirmed. But then they set up cameras in the people's backyard yeah. to watch over it. So it's like something happened. And they've already talked about they've like the government's already admitted to like aliens being like a true thing. Like that's what? that came out last year. I need the link. You haven't seen this? Y'all no. really this is like real like hold on, I'm about to pull it up. Josh, if, I don't it, I don't know if it's hashtag trust me, bro. If it's hashtag trust me, bro, no, this is be... LA Times, New York Times everywhere. <laughs> the Times. Wait, are you sure I want the onion? All right, man. <laughs> No, hashtag, hashtag trust me, bro, is crazy. But nah, that shit real is that shit real deal, Holyfield, bro. But stop fucking like, with it's mad shit, bro. Like, it, I think that's just the longest short of the, this whole thing is that like I feel like white people have been, been testing the waters, no pun in intended. Twenty twenty one for la- the Pentagon released UFO videos. Like, what are you, like what are we talking where, about? Where here? is this from? It, it's, it's it's in the New times? York Times. What what it, what it, what ultimately. Did U.S. government from- tracking more than 650 potential UFO cases. This is 2023. Why don't we see these things, though? That is, is my question. People why see niggas, them. Why, is- don't Nick, why is Nick like black people? Why oh, we I, mean, I don't know. I mean, niggas, ain't, niggas is looking on their phones all day. That's why we ain't seeing shit. But my point being is UFOs have been confirmed. 
you have the weather machine that's been confirmed. And then I don't even know if y'all heard about this, but NASA was talking about there's going to be a big Wi-Fi like blackout. Like last week, they said they figured it out. But I think this is all confirmed. Remember, I said this on past episodes that Wi-Fi is alien technology. <laughs> I've said this before. You have not said this. I've on definitely when said this before. When the fuck did you say that? You, he's I never said it. Go back and listen. I've definitely said it. If I haven't, then I, I, I've for sure have said it somewhere else. UFO, Wi-Fi is alien technology, and that shit was almost taken from us. And so NASA said, oh, we figured it out. They must have made a peace treaty. Here's the thing. I did not know that you were a prepper, Josh. I did not it's know It's not even about prepping. Doomsday. Like, you, you Googling the shit, and you seeing it, though, right? All right. Yeah, all right. Wi Fi is at alien technology. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, look at him. Well, I'm looking Google at Google it. You see it though. It's, it's there. What is history of yesterday? What is business standard? What What are you what are you Googling right now? I not NASA Wi Fi shit. It doesn't matter. Oh, it's the on. same keywords. NASA Wi Fi <laughs> Like, what are you saying to me right now? All right. It's the same keywords. It, right. It's gonna be the same. What is NASA Internet Apocalypse? Uh da, 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 the the spacecraft was on twenty eighteen. Again, what what is what what are you finding from this? I'm it, just it saying that like it's just, it, it didn't happen. It, it didn't happen. <laughs> averted crisis was averted, but I, I, it's all connected. Josh, I have to say, out of all of the crazy things that you have perpetrated on this show, I'm not perpetrating anything. I'm just telling you, bro. All right, where I need to know your internet browsing history. Let's keep bro. this timestamp. Let's make sure we have this in the archives forever. <laughs> okay, in a couple months. When so the aliens really touch down and like, hey man, we what here. Are, what are you all, gonna do with this? That's what, what I'm saying. Do? What are you doing with an alien touchdown? Go to work down. tomorrow. I'm gonna do the same shit I've been <laughs> doing. They ain't bothering me. Like, what are you gonna do with an alien touch down and say, I don't know what the fuck they're gonna say. That like, they're, and they look like the Mars attacks aliens and shit. What what what, what is it? What are we gonna do? It's not gonna look like that. They're gonna come down here and just be like, okay, like we here coexist. What do you think aliens look like? Uh, they look like what they've been prepared to look like. Tall beings. Like, with the but they, eyes? I'm pretty sure they can shape shift into some regular looking humans. <laughs> like, because what you told me with the aliens, the orcas, which we do know is happening, the uh, the UFOs. This sounds like a a, a Marvel movie, a DC movie, a multiverse yeah. shit. This, this I mean, happening how, right now. My thing is too with that. How do you think they come up with these concepts for these movies and multiverse and shit? Like, it ain't There's just these things that have been going on since the '60s, Josh. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> just telling you, man. Like these these are, these are not stories that are just made up. No, I'm not saying they're just made up. But I'm saying they're made up from something. Your imagination comes up with this shit from something. Go back. You need to smoke again. No, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real, bro. <laughs> you need to go back to. I'm smoking. just keeping it real. If you don't believe in aliens, you're. I'm you're, not saying I don't believe in aliens. Okay, I play mad video games, fanciful as I'm playing Final Fantasy 16 right now, having a blast. So you know, don't say I can't believe in nothing like out of I'm the a, ordinary. But at the end of the day. You never went on this show and talked about a Wi-Fi shortage. No, I, I not a Wi-Fi. I know. I've definitely said the Wi-Fi is alien technology. Josh, you've never said Josh, that. All right, well, edit, I'm telling you now. Every episode. Edits every I've show. Never heard I'm telling Wi-Fi you now, alien. and when the Wi-Fi goes out or, or the Wi-Fi changes in some way, just know the aliens came down here to take their Josh, shit Josh, what is our Wi-Fi going to change into? It might just make it more expensive. Like, hey, we, we taxing now for this. I, and, and that goes to a bigger point. What is the one bill that you're more pissed off to pay every month? Because I fucking hate paying my phone bill every month. Yeah. That's a part of the game. Nah, bill, I would never, I there has to be phone. a bill that's just like, fuck, man, I got to do this Oh, shit car again. insurance. Car insurance, okay. Yeah, yes. exactly. That's a racket. Yeah, that like, is I, a racket. Yeah, I don't even, yeah. even want to say anything about accents. That's just happened right after you start talking about them. Did but. you know that I've been on the search for new car insurance for a whole two months? You've been driving with no insurance? Uh no I'm 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 I have I found a new a new oh, insurer but that shit driving with no insurance is like driving with nigga I don't know <laughs> that, that's no rubber that's no rubber sex I tell you what yeah that's yeah. worse <laughs> <laughs> but it's shit this shit's crazy they're not accepting anybody anymore bro yeah sure car insurance is a racket I'm with um insurance ad so y'all can give me a lower lower rate <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 they but, are uh, not go ahead go, go ahead and talk to the general and save some time bro you good oh man I, I don't know how to, I don't think the general will work out here. Because I they, see the commercial all the time. I gotta work out here because I they, I've called everywhere. They're should like, work on Nissan's only though. If I tell them what cars <laughs> that I have in my garage, though, they're like, "No, nah, we're not taking the new people." I'm like, "What the fuck do I got to drive? You got to take me." I don't even. I forgot how I got my shit. I might have just went on insurance. Just like I might have just you know ads get you. Yeah. Because I, I ain't. I told somebody about insurance the other day, and they was like, "I never heard of that." I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> I heard of insurance, but like back in like. 2001. Yeah, that's when, I heard, that's when I heard about it too. <laughs> and I just remembered it since then. It should have been ingrained. I was like, like, insurance get... had the bomb ass commercials back in 2001. Yeah. And now, I was, when you told me you had insurance a couple weeks ago, I was just like, insurance? They got me. 
got me, got they me, got him. Yeah, <laughs> program me. That's all you got. That's all you got to do is just like we the best. We just be like, all right, we the best. I always tell Nick this man the advertising trick, man. Um, always say like number one, slap number one before you even claim automatic click. One. Oh yeah, because Nick, because Nick, niggas don't even, you know, what I'm saying they don't even do the research. They just be like, oh, the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, like, out here in New York, nigga be like, yo, the best pizza. You're going to pass by so many, like, New York's best, the number one yeah. slice. Da, da, da. That's marketing. Like, it's advertising. Yeah. Yeah, it's great marketing because a nigga going to say, well, what about this place? Yeah. Nigga be like, nigga, we ain't never eat there. You be like, but he says it's the best. It's the best. <laughs> it's like, nah, nigga. What? Well, like, you're supposed to be that. It's the manipulation of it. Hey, Alexa, play Black Print Radio on now. Now playing Black Print Radio. There it goes. Back to you. What's up? I am Betty Who, and I am live on AMP. Michelle Beadle, The Kid Meryl. Live. Play music, we talk. On playlists that resonate with you. And you guys get to interview me, so we get to flip the script a little bit. Real connections with real people. Like the access to the library of the world of music. <laughs> and can I curse? Yeah. Connection is everything. Sharing music in real time. Only on AMP. On AMP. On AMP. One more thing I want to I want to touch. I, I kind of want to lead a, the LV show to to um to B size. All right. I want to lead the LV show to because I, I feel like we're gonna get some brutally honest opinions. Uh, nah, I've, and I want to put them behind the paywall. All right. About you, the show, if you're inclined. Right. I, I I feel like we should be inclined, but I, I do want to I do want to touch on the uh the business is business, the Thug album. Mm. Before we get out of here, um, came out last weekend. There was a time. There was a countdown timer last week, and it kept getting pushed back because I, I guess you know three hundred. But um, came out executive produced by Metro Boomin, a bevy of of, of uh, features on the album. Mm-hmm. Drake's on there twice. Travis Scott's on there twice. I think Twenty One's on there twice. A couple, a lot of his friends uh, are, are, are on there. Um, but but I mean, again, you know, it sounds like this is stuff that's that was recorded before he went in. Um, a lot of people are. I don't really get the. I I feel like what's happening right now, and I, and I hate to like keep bringing up the topic of this, is I feel like people are like putting their line in the sand instead of just like staying out of the shit. Where it's like, if you're not gonna listen to Gunna, like just don't listen to Gunna, but don't try and flip it to make it seem like you're supporting him more by saying the Thug album's whack or whatever. I'm just like, cause it's not whack, but it's it's weird the the internet um echo chamber of of these two albums right now is just very strange to me, and I just wanted to touch on that today. No, I mean I think people just want to be down in a part of the conversation mm-hmm. i have seen a lot of people like oh this is whack this is good um i like i've, I've been having the conversation i've been on team thug in my group chats and people have been on team gunna and it's just like what, how, what does that team mean like these are on these, i mean these honestly are- it's just jokes for me yeah. but i think at the end of the day I, trayvon touched on it early on it's like it's a moral standing type thing but even if you even if you're even if it some people i and i understand your moral standings i understand trade's moral standings i feel like there's people that don't have that at all and I think that they, yeah, the civilians. Yeah, and I think they just want to be like, oh well, we we believe this strange conversation that the thug said, so I'm automatically gonna thugs whack now, and I'm not gonna go. I'm just like he hasn't actually said anything. Like he yeah. just put the album out. Like that's, you guys are- that's the internet though. When you when you think about anything, right? Mm-hmm. When you come into a, a situation of like Jordan, you know. LeBron or et cetera, right? Mm-hmm. Eric, push a Jim Jones. Like, it just depends. If your mind is already made up, bro, you're going to be moving in that action of, 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 of what you're supposed to do. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? In this situation, there's people that's like, I don't snitch or I don't support mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And then there's people that's like, I just love Gunna. Now, mm-hmm. I think Gunna always going to make the better music. You feel me? Like, he just knows his pocket. I'm not listening to Thug for better music. I think Thug makes shit that just, like, is fun, funny, energetic etc this album was just something that kind of like whether pay for lawyer lawyer fees whether to drown yeah. out buddies um album sales i don't i don't know because again i still see ysl posting this you yeah. know you supporting mm-hmm. dude's album so mm-hmm. we don't really know what's going on we're going off of uh Conjecture. speculation and Conjecture. shit like that but yeah. at the end of the day like you listen to who you want to listen to i know for sure i've seen it i've heard the numbers show what it is that uh you know what i mean that 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 dude's album is better than this album but thug even said like one of them verses one of them like a couple of them songs are like six years old they just trying to put some out like i said i'm sure it's just to help the financial keep the keep the money flowing and yeah. we're gonna probably yeah. get more projects that aren't complete and i'm not um i'm i'm, I'm not going to hold it to a point of like oh the expectations of a boosie or two exactly. to succeed or gucci man yeah i mean 
I thought, I, I mean, I looked at that and I, and I saw what it was. And I think a lot of people were trying to be like, no, I'm like, bro, it's literally, why are y'all not happy that this man is putting out music? It just doesn't make any sense. Like, you guys yeah. have been saying free him for a whole year. He puts out mm. music and it's automatically, you, you're drawing a line in the sand where it's just like, well, I'm Team Gunner or, or uh, another weird thing is like, oh, it just sounds like a bunch of verses they put beats under. I'm like, well, yeah, you think he's got a fucking microphone in the prison? Yeah, that's the thing. It's, I I feel like there's a lot of weird conversation <laughs> around the, the Thug album that's like stupid. Like, I, I do believe, I feel like the first verse of Business is Business, it sounds like he recorded that through the phone. Like, yeah. I think his parts where he's, like, pronouncing his P's, you can kind of hear the, like, yeah. crackle. The yeah, yeah, the pop of it. But, um, but I, I, again, I don't think someone going through a court case and doing what they're doing right now is going to put out some new projects and be like, fuck Ghana. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like, no, I'm going through a trial right now. That's not even the shit. energy I'm going to be on. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's just interesting. Like, I, it's, but that's what they're... That's what they're playing off of. Right. When Thug puts this project out right after Gunna, mm-hmm. and like that's that's the energy they want to bring to it. Mm-hmm. So it's all entertainment. It's, um that's why I said, like, in my group chats, I'm jokingly talking about it and having mm-hmm. that conversation. But at the end of the day, I'm just happy, like you said, to have new music out yeah. from both Gunna and Thug. Even if I'm not listening to the Gunna project, I'm happy that he's putting new music out and people are enjoying it. Because best case scenario here, Josh, is Thug gets a billboard chart and single out of this. Yeah. Uh, that keeps his name out there. Because yeah. his name has been relatively silent on the charts for the past year. Best case scenario for 300 in Atlantic and YSL is that Thug and Gunna are both in the top 10. Regardless yeah. of what's going on with them, you know, personally, we don't know. Because they haven't said anything. And I, I doubt that they, well, Gunna said a lot. But, you know, Thug hasn't said anything. Like, best case scenario for them is that people are still talking about these two. Yeah. Because that keeps their name in the, in the public conversation. And I think that, like, strangely enough, YSL is, like, the biggest conversation in rap right now. Because people yeah. want to know. I mean, it's funny. That's how lame rap is at the moment. <laughs> yeah. It's like we ain't had a number one album. The crew that's locked up and going through retail cases is the hottest crew at the moment. Exactly. It's just the most <laughs> talked about, at least. Yeah. Um, My thing is, is it even a crew? Is it even a crew anymore? I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, to a certain degree. It's a crew until they say it's not a crew. You know what I'm saying? It's a crew. It's a label, rather. I'm sorry. Until they say it's not a label anymore. I, I think that like the, the, the big conversation is... I think people are waiting to see what what Thug says. I think that like your Thug lying. has that's my thing. That the waiting to see what Thug says, he said a lot already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I and I and I agree. You know what I'm saying? I I agree with that. I think that the line is firmly in the sand with who's on the album, who's not on the album. You see people that have you know you could say you could say oh the people that played out aren't on the album. So like that that's where it is. B Slime's still there. Little Goddard is still there. Those are really the two, um, the two vocal people. Yeah. outside of it that have that have been YSL uh, I think uh, also I feel I feel really bad for Trench who got signed right before all this shit happened he's he's still flying the flag but he's not on the album but like I feel bad for the kid because I thought he had a little bit of potential but mm. those are really the only three or four people that are, that are I would say are probably still in his good graces right now as, as, as well as like Future and all that stuff but I think the album is solid like I, I think it's good I'm I'm really just happy you know you guys know I'm a huge fan of Thug like I'm just happy to that I can hear music from him and snippets that I've heard a year ago before they got locked, before he got locked up. And I'm happy that he, that he's making music. I'm always going to side with that guy. Cause you know, he's my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I can't take a side here, but I do know that in the first weekend, I'm probably listening. I've been listening to that shit more than a gunner project, to be honest. Yeah. And I think to everyone's point earlier, it's not even a side. We don't even have to take sides, yeah. but I think they do as yeah. rappers and yeah. entertainer or whatever they want to be, whatever they are, they have to take sides. And I think they very well have taken their sides. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the thug album more just because the gunner album to me is just like a lot of like, sad. yeah, it's, <laughs> it's sad. sad. It's like apologizing. <laughs> yeah. Cop and please. Like I just, I can't, I don't want to listen to that. I want to yeah. hear some more upbeat shit. And then I just, it's hard for me to listen to someone talk about like, putting money on your head and all that shit after just like what he went through. I think that's the hardest part for me. Yeah. It's like, cause even her hearing like older tracks, like I can't listen to him. Cause I'm like, you're just not about what you rap about. I do think it's crazy. on thug album. I was like, it's, it's a lot more violent than I expected it to be with a man that's in prison right now. I'm like, yo, it's, it's, it's actually still like violent. He's still talking about a lot of shit. Like they, they try and like tone it down a bit, but they ain't cutting out no type of references and shit that you can still kind of hear in some of the verses. Like yeah. Jonesboro, that, that really great song toward the end. I, which I I think again, like you look for you know you say he's not lyrical, you say all that shit that that's right there. There's proof right there, and 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 shout out the Metro for sequencing this album in a way that kind of purports and shows off his strengths. Like you got the weird rapping, you got the actual lyrical stuff, and you got the fact that this guy can actually write a song too. Like the song with Drake 
uh, toward the middle of the album is fucking a mm-hmm. banger. Like that best case scenario, that's the song that that comes out. Bro, parade on Cleveland itself. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a great like, that's a great intro. Again, like bro, I'm just like, all right, bro. He told me he didn't. You know, getting his licks back and ain't gonna be sexy. Like <laughs> he talking that. Listen, he talking that hurt, that hurt, that hurt music, bro. Like, yeah. but it, but it's needed for the summer. You feel me? When you on your villain shit. But <laughs> I don't know. I'm with it, man. I, I'm definitely with it. I, like I said, I enjoy the project. I say I like it. Most people were like, damn, why you? You know, how you like it? And I'm like, bro, it's weird. I like it. Don't mean it has to be the hardest shit ever. You feel me? Yeah. Like it, it's it's serviceable. Like nowadays, nigga, all listen to is jazz anyway. Yeah. So, what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just something, just a part of the conversation, so I'm not out the mix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hit play real quick, and then I get right back to the jazz, nigga. Yeah. Like, straight up. Jazz and Pilates. I I, I want to I wanna get right to, we mentioned a little That'd bit That'd be a earlier. dope-ass party. <laughs> jazz and Pilates, low-key, right? Oh, God. <laughs> the the Pusha T, Jim Jones shit, I think, why, why is there so much? That, that's how you know a rap is in the dirt also. This is the biggest beef biggest conversation as well it's probably number two to the thug and gunner shit what's your thoughts on that josh no nah, i mean the push a t verse i don't there's some parts i don't get like i don't get the heaven or hell line uh i don't know like the push a t shit was cool premiering at the I, I, hearing rap music at fashion shows is always cool to me yeah that's always gonna be something dope um i don't really love the beat really and everybody was like i heard a lot of people praising that beat i'm like i don't really love that beat but it's cool like i i think it was in due time. Push it was going to re- respond to the whole Jim Jones and top fifty rapper it just thing. Seems like such a slight thing for him to get upset about. No, I mean, I don't even think he's super upset. So I think it's just like fodder for him to rap about. This is gonna. This is if this, if it wasn't this, what could Pusha T rap about to make it make his raps exciting? Mm, Coke. It's like so. It's like I think this is just he he found something to latch on to and something for people to talk about and get hyped for the new clips album that's yeah. coming and great yeah that's what it's all about so um you know I, I when i heard it i was like okay like you know i didn't think it was like you know it was light jabs yeah um and then even like the jim jones response like i'm glad that jim jones did a response on like the for the uh for your block or on yeah. your block thing yeah. like i just think that's dope that was cool like, he gave that that platform a look with <laughs> right that. right like, is he the biggest rapper to do that maybe i think so mm-hmm. i mean well no i, I fuck yadi's done it i mean yadi's bigger than jim jones I right mean, I, 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 say, I say in terms of like legacy like it's, it's yeah. cool to premiere just like it's cool for him to premiere that 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 song at the fashion show it's cool for him to premiere that on that platform yeah I, how people are going to go see what he said yeah i thought that was just super dope that was the dopest part of this shit to me um jim's jim's bars were dope i think you know he, he can just, rap he can, yeah and jim <laughs> that's been a fact for the last five can, ten years yeah. Yeah, yeah so it was just dope to see him come back so fast yeah um i don't think pusha t's gonna respond back that fast he but I, I think I like the way Jim Jones left the door open and be like, yeah, come back. Like, say something else. Like, I want, yeah. I, like, Jim Jones knows what he's doing. He's yeah. like, let's continue this. Like, <laughs> I need this energy too. <laughs> this is going to get me my next album. I, so, I, just, I just feel like for the, for the both of them, I'm like, I, let's just keep it on. Let's just keep it, let's just keep it there. You know it's what I'm sparring. Like, no, nah, it's, it's a good spar. Like, yeah. uh, it's it, like, like we said earlier, like rap is boring right now. Yeah. So if this is what we can get, got, we got to take it. This is all over Drake, by the way. Like it just, just, like, it just seems like silly. Like I'm like, push it, please detach yourself from that narrative already. Sick part like, about it is Drake going to have some jabs on this project. Oh, you think so? Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> he not done, bro. And, and nothing's too far, bro. Like I was looking at this shit, right? Cool. The idea, this is the thing. Real Pusha T fans know the nigga gonna be talking about some shit that you gotta really experience to do. Drake does that too, where you're just like, this is a different type of wealth. No one makes me feel more broker than Drake, Rick Ross, and Busha T, right? Because mm. I remember Googling Pooch and Charles Jordan back then, you feel me? When he would like make his little comments or, you know, like just different shit that he would just never say, like how he'd never wear a motherfucking uh, Amiri and shit, you yeah. feel me? Like, and Amiri ain't did shit to him, but it's just like, <laughs> You can never you can never say he bought a bitch Michael Kors. You know, he put numbers on the boards. Um, just different different flex talks in them situations. So the idea that his this record was played during the LV, you know, show while he walked in a fucking extended leather. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that motherfucker was. Well, no, we gotta we gotta we gotta talk coat. we gotta we gotta talk about y'all, that. y'all can talk y'all can talk about that on the Patreon. But I just thinking about that and then like how Josh said, more so it's like that's Jim Jones' response time. Mm. 
that's that's what we used to from the 2006 to 2009 era. We're like, He's all oh, okay, yeah. you, I can go check them. This is blog era-ish type things. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're like, refresh the blog. Oh, shit, he responded in less than 24 hours. Mm. Not the bullshit. I'm still looking for a studio fab joke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, these dudes, I'm not, I'm not looking for Jimmy to have bars. I'm not looking for Jimmy to be lyrical. I'm looking for Jimmy to be witty, but then also say, fuck this rap shit. I'm going to fly to Paris and pull up on you and slap you or pull your braids. <laughs> that is very 2006 New York <laughs> energy. And that's what I got from that. Like, look, the whole world has decided that you're going to cook me in this. Yeah. But don't get this rap shit foolish. You know the line across. And when I see you, I'm going to run up on you and smack the koofy up off your head, as he once told Nas. And he will do and it. Has, and that's the thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's aggregated multiple people in general and really made them eat their words. Yeah. Like, oh, you know you said this and that. Watch your mouth. You don't know the situation. So I think he goes, I think Pusha goes a little deeper with the knife. You know what I mean? The fact that he called his reality TV checks similar to wrestling. I know you took offense a little bit on that. (laughs) And then he was saying what happened to that boy, kind of teasing that malice crack usage. So, again, (laughs) it's a lot of shit that's kind of like, all right, we can play that game and get dirty, but I just think that Pusher going to take it another level. And if he if 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 he somehow knows how to auto auto audio version free Max B or <laughs> put some rule that aligns with that, God bless. Jimmy can get Jim can get disrespectful too. I mean, I know we remember what he was doing with Tanaz, you know, what he what he said about Jay, all that shit. This is funny like 50 and um and Ross though. Yeah, <laughs> the Curtis era, the Curtis era. Like, I'm not taking it too serious. I'm getting humor out of this. Yeah. Like, this Same. nigga dissed you out in Paris on a walk in a runway, and this <laughs> nigga just dissed you standing next to trash bags <laughs> in a dark city, talking about some bullshit off beat. Like, it was great yeah. on my boredom right now. It's just like it is what it is. Pod, like, yeah. bro, I'm just literally just watching shit as the days go by. Like, it's pure entertainment because the shit we seeing on timeline talking about you know the shit that don't matter yeah i don't care i'm giving my shit to all the ignorance and shit that make me laugh absolutely yeah exactly it's not it's not the worst thing in the world negative negative campaign it it gravitates people towards that you talked about the positive part of it you could put number one on something and people just gravitate towards that you can also flip it and do the opposite somebody can say a basketball player is not top five and all of a sudden you get He's Kevin Durant joining it and say hey what what <laughs> makes you think I'm not top five and then we have like a 30 40 minute convo on it yes yeah, I, I don't I don't know where we're going with with the discourse of, of everything Katie's wilding for being in that chat for for that long all you got to do is come in and say I made 20 million this year and then leave it was a, it was a terrible <laughs> it was a terrible combo I listened to the entire thing the the actual purpose of what they're trying to you illustrate towards that. all that it was so stupid it was like oh well you're not top five to me but you're actually seven or eight I was like <laughs> we're having an uh, hour and a half combo just to tell him you're not five you're eight listen when you get the God in the room, bro, you got to let the God talk, man. That's a shut up and listen moment. Yeah. Okay. You, you got one moderator, you ask the question, and then you shut up. <laughs> it was so many, like, unnecessary opinions. And, like, of course, I hate Twitter. Twitter always goes to a line where they go and search a nigga picture. Go get all <laughs> personal. I am not want to see this man taking a selfie in the pool or they killed that guy the off. you know, his Birkenstocks. <laughs> I didn't even there. believe that was a real person you know when they did that. <laughs> Like, as a real, like, he really, like, niggas is really taking it too far. And now my situation is like, Slim was bored. He felt like he needed to go in there and, you know, put some put some, put some some respect on this shit. And normally everybody like, oh, I wouldn't do it. But, like, again, think about this, right? If I know y'all on this panel, bro, and somebody say something crazy about y'all, I'm for sure going to tell you for one, but I might defend them too, you feel me? Mm, but yeah. nobody can defend them like yourself. Mm. So no matter how much money this dude got – Everybody always attack his personal life versus his actual shit on the court. You right. feel me? Like, yeah. oh, you saw or you you, you this and that. Like, what that that has zero to that has zero correlation on why he shot bad in the game. Yeah, that's zero. You know what I mean? That's zero correlation of like who's playing on his team. When you start talking about somebody's personal character, you got all the right in the world to defend that. And like, that's why I don't even be tripping off them. Like, I remember the first time, like, yo, you need to chill out. He's like. Glasses actually, Glasses Malone told him to chill out. He's like, nah, nigga, you chill out. <laughs> we in a chat together. So it was funny because it wasn't like a personal shit, but like it made me dial back because if somebody was talking crazy to me, 
I get to pick and choose the shit. But if it's enough to like gain enough traction, I got to defend myself. It's like yeah, yeah. once Twitter yeah. says it's true, then it yeah. don't have to be true. Yeah. It's just true. It's and in the air. No, nah, that's a great point. I think I, I'm never mad at him getting into those like sparring sessions on Twitter and shit because like and people are always like, oh, you're Kevin Durant. You're you bigger than this. But it's like if someone was even say something about me <laughs> on the timeline and I saw it, I'm going to respond back. Yeah. Bigger nah, or small. I, yeah, I, f- I fully understand that. I don't think I don't think there was so much of the blowback as why are you in here, but it was more so Kevin asking, like trying to get into the details of it. Of like, okay, you're saying this, and I'm listening to what you're talking about. What is your point? Like, what is the what is the actual point that you're trying to make towards all of this? And the conversation revolved around, ah, well, your free throw shrink and your playoff percentage. Uh, Max Drews takes more shots than you in the playoffs, <laughs> and I'm like, why are we spending a Friday evening? On this, what is the purpose of you trying to make this huge, huge point about this? And then he asked him, well, who's your top five? And then the guy lists the top five and he goes, oh, well, you're not top five, but you're actually top 10 for sure, for sure. And (laughs) Kevin had to tell him like, like, yeah, the way that y'all discuss basketball and the way that y'all take these statistics and make these agendas is terrible. I think it is. I think it is terrible. And I truly do agree with Kevin on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I love when he gets on his gets on his shit and starts talking to the fans because it's like he lives it you know what yeah. i mean like <laughs> that's the crazy part about it is that he lives it like and the reason i was just like why do you do that because it's like we we see that we see it but again like like trey said like the narratives get out of control and next thing you know it'll be on it'll be on fucking first take where they're like oh, they're really questioning it and they're basing it off of quotes from this fucking twitter uh this, this twitter spaces so it's like i i get it I, I feel like I, I love KD. Like I think he's a great player. Like I, I've always like loved the way that he plays. But it's like I, I think that he's he's gonna go down as like one of the most online <laughs> uh, players of all time, for better or for worse. But I feel like you, he should, you know, you know, he should speak his truth. But he, he also lives it. I'm just like you live it. Like you don't even have to mention these motherfuckers. Like you live this shit. You have all, your own podcast, your own fucking empire. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I feel like he should like live in that and know it. But I, I know it's easy to let these narratives get out of control and that's why he has to respond and and that's why he has to have eight burner accounts or whatever the fuck people say he has. I'm but just I'm not letting these niggas talk shit. Yeah. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Big or small. He got a, he got rings. Multi million dollars rings or not. Yeah. Billionaire. Like a long must that's all that, that that's all that's all that shit boiled down to is y'all got me fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Elon Musk does the same shit. Well, Nigga, talking shit about him, he jump on the timeline like what's up? Like he being he being mentions like yo like what what you mean? I seen mm-hmm. that a couple times for him, and he's a fucking billionaire. So it's like Elon press ratio. Have to worry you know about. what? I'm about to tweet that man. I gotta respect the press ratio of Kevin Durant and Elon Musk. Man, they be they be right there. <laughs> not, not, no, come on, don't put them in the same tweet. Bro. They do though. <laughs> they, be, they be on bumpers. Like, what's going on? All right, I've seen it a couple times. You from get us. you get you get Josh a window. To say I'm just saying. About Elon Musk. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. <laughs> and he's just gonna jump right through that bitch. I would have. <laughs> Shout out I, to think a, I think a Wi-Fi shortage might actually benefit humanity. Yeah, I think so too. I think I think we need to go back to uh, rotary phones. But thank I, I want to thank Trevon for being on the show today. Uh, fantastic conversation that we had. We went off on so many tangents. We we didn't hit every single topic that we had on the list, but that's fine because we had some good ass conversation regardless. So thank you for being on the show, brother. Man, thank you, man. It's always a good time. You know what I'm saying. I feel like it was almost, it took too long, man. Oh, no, for like, sure. What's going on, bro? Yeah, we, we need you to do this I'm more saying? often. We need to do this more often. We, we, we... I'm honorary. I'm honorary fourth member, bro. Hey, 100%. man. You here. Four boxes. 100%. Because <laughs> you know what? You're the, only, you're, you're the one person at any time I ever text and I need some advice or I'm like, yo, you want me on the show this week or anything like that? You're like, yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? And and I really appreciate that. And, you know, for you to be the first, like, real, actual, real deal guest and sit with us for this hour is just it's just been amazing so thank you so much for being on the show that's love that's love appreciate you fellas uh we got b-sides coming up of course uh we're, and we're gonna we're gonna get over to that right now so thank you guys for listening to the black print we'll be back next week with black print radio mm-hmm. uh and we'll we'll be you know putting all the content down on youtube and on our channels and, and everywhere that you, that you might search so stay tuned for b-sides we'll be talking about the lv show We'll be giving an update on the idol <laughs> and and see if if uh if anyone's jumping off the ship and we'll be also talking about the black name because I, I need to know why Josh does not like the black name. Terrible fucking film. <laughs> so we'll, if you want to hear his review and all that, uh, yeah. ch- check out B-Sides this week. Uh, for MC and Josh Pease, I'm J5. We'll see you guys later on in the week. Uh, peace.